The podcast you're about to hear involves true stories, which may contain graphic content that is not suitable for children. Listener's discretion is advised. This is Esoteric Oddities. Hey guys, raise your fucking hands if you felt fucking victimized by Mercury Retrograde. Raised fucking hand, because let me tell you, some shit's been happening. Why don't you let a, let the people know what's been happening? I'm honestly so sick of talking about this because I've told 50,000 people this story, but I, I'll share with the rest of the world. Class, listen up. So, you know, I'm a broke-ass bitch like everybody else. Holla! So I found this cute-ass couch on the Facebook Marketplace for $50. $29. It was the last <laughs> It was the last fucking thing I needed for my living room. I had everything else and I don't know if I've ever told you guys, but I stressed about having a nice living room when I moved into my um now apartment. Yeah, because your last apart your last living room wasn't really a living room. It was like a, a college like that's it that's all you gotta say okay okay so i was really stressed so i was like all right all i need like it's all this started falling together it was just like you know tv stand little chair rug so i was like okay all i need was like a couch like not a problem not a problem fifty dollars okay so wednesday last wednesday me and my friend went to go pick it up um didn't fit in her fucking car so um I messaged the girl on Facebook and I'm like, hey, can you like keep it outside for me? Like, um, I mean, inside I can't pick like, it up. Like, I, it's not, not going to fit in your car. So she's like, I can't. I'm sorry. So we try to get a U haul. It's closed. We try to get a van from Home Depot. It's too late. So we go back and the couch is sitting outside. It's raining. <clears throat> Amazing. Love that. Just, you know, for dramatic defect. Dramatic <laughs> defect. It better just be. <laughs> dramatic so um me and my friends start covering it with trash trash bags she gets a fucking ticket for 78 dollars because she parked by a fire hydrant so i'm like oh god like can it get any worse uh it can i go home i cry I had a really bad day i got into an argument with my girlfriend because i was so frustrated um and then the next day came and work let me take off the half like half of a day so i could go get the couch so we all woke up at 7 a.m it's me my girlfriend and my friend we get the u-haul everything's running smooth it's it's 50 dollars. so now you know i'm out 110 dollars when it was only supposed to be 50 dollars. but it's fine it's not what it's about so um <laughs> we go to bring the couch in my house and it doesn't fit so we have to take the hinges off the door and we try to get it up the stairs and it doesn't fit. Mind you, it scrapes the paint off my walls. That have just been painted. Because I just moved in July 1st. So that's an issue. So then, um, you know, we try for an hour to get it through. It doesn't. I cry for three hours. Um, and then I had to call off at of work because my door has to be put back on the hinges. <clears throat> I'm literally crying, <laughs> sobbing, and oh. my fucking apartment has no door. <laughs> Um, I'm just mentally drained at this point. So, um, my dad is like, well, can't you do it through the back, through the balcony? I'm like, who is bringing a rope and pushing a couch up there? Like full on Harriet the Spy style. So he gets movers. They come, they can't get the couch up. It's like an inch. They get it through an inch. Mind mind you, by now my walls are fucked. All the paint is torn off. So I'm like, whatever. So then they punch a hole in the wall, I mean, in the ceiling, trying to get the couch in. And then the guy's like, well, if I just, like, shave off an inch, it'll be in. So at this point, I'm like, all right, everything is, like, destroyed. Why not shave off an inch? So I'm like, okay, it's just an inch. It'll be fine. So they shave off an inch, and then they try to get the couch up there, and it rips the wall off the fucking... It just rips the plaster off the wall. And, so now, like, the, the, uh, the metal that's in the corner of your wall is, is showing. like, bent. Yes. And then... Um, and and then that's, we, like, the size of a softball. Yeah. And then uh, he couldn't get in all because um, I have, like... So my apartment is, like, stairs going up, and then there's little... There's, like, two steps going into the kitchen, and because they're wood, that's why it doesn't fit. 
So he did all that for fucking nothing. I have he got holes. up that high. Yeah. Oh, that's what no. I'm saying. That's why I was like, all right, just shave off the inch. It's fine. It's already there. Like, oh my god! So it got stuck by the bathroom. No, it got yeah, like right before that. Hmm. Yep. And uh, then <laughs> what? What day was this? Usually, I have to tell you to speak up, but Jesus, you're yelling in my ear. I'm sorry. Um, what part are we at? Uh, that was Wednesday. When did I... Then Thursday. So Thursday, I find this cute fucking Coyote Ugly CD. I, I get it for Jonathan. I'm, like, excited. I text him a picture of it. I'm, like, got you something. Like, I'm hyped. I'm I was hyped, too. I was I'm like, like, yes. I was getting ready to get on top of a bar and I'm start saying, singing. I'm and singing Leanne Rhyme. Mm-hmm. Don't fight the moon right now. All right. Well, Leanne, don't rhyme on this podcast, bitch. So. All right. So um, I opened the fucking CD case. And what do you know? The CD is stolen out of it. This is literally exactly the way my <laughs> life is going right now. Like, it's just literally like missing it by an inch. <laughs> that was like, I I told Sarah I already apologized for laughing. But like the rest of it, like I feel for you. And you know I'm here for you for that shit. But that Coyote Ugly CD, that text I got from you, it was just like, I got you something with like a hearty face. And then two seconds later, it was like, never mind. Somebody fucking snatched the CD out of it. Literally, that's been my life last week. Oh, sweetie. And then I was supposed to go home. And I was honestly just so mentally exhausted that I literally couldn't get there. <laughs> well, I love you. <laughs> Love you. And I was mad. Be- well, I wasn't mad, but you didn't tell me when this whole car thing was going on. I could have seen if I could have done something. I mean, I do. My car isn't that big, but maybe I, I could have talked to Jason. I know, but it literally, the whole thing was it wouldn't fit in my house. Like, I literally just. That's true. That's true. Didn't. I literally saw this couch and went with it. I didn't measure. I didn't. I didn't look. I didn't do anything that I should have done. So learn from her mistakes, and it was a mistake. Measure, bitches. Sorry, that was in your ear. Measure, bitches, and if he says nine inches, he's lying. He's a six. <laughs> he's lying. Um, well, my week wasn't quite as <laughs> exciting. However, this is pretty fucked up. So the day after Demi Lovato allegedly overdosed, it wasn't heroin. Allegedly, it wasn't here. Allegedly. Allegedly. Um, but the next day, I was at Wawa. Um, we were at the beach. I was at Wawa. I'm inside with my brother, and we come outside. And my cousin is standing outside of his car. And he, he's like, I got to call 911 really quick because the woman in the car next to us is overdosing. Yeah. Where was he? The person in the car. It no, was a woman was in the car. your brother? My brother was with me. It was my cousin who was outside. Oh, right, right. Because we parked next to this woman and it was, we were there for breakfast. So it was like maybe 1030, maybe 11. We were on beach time, you know. And this woman it's, is. It's my time, not beach. No. Add that out. Okay. My tie. <clears throat> I was trying to make like a. Oh. You it's aimed beach high. beach time, not your time. Oh, okay. I thought it was funny. It was funny. But, uh, yeah, so this woman was like overdosing on something and she was bugging out and my cousin um he's a cop <laughs> but like so he's seen some shit so he knows so he calls 911 and he's speaking in cop tongue to them and he's just like we have like a alpha cap or niner niner this is applebee's your food is ready <laughs> christine sadalko said that i was dying um but the woman who was uh the 911 uh, dispatcher didn't understand what he was saying and made him repeat it like four times and he's like she's in this woman is dying yeah and gave the car the color said it was a female gave possibly her age exactly where we were exactly where it was parked mind you where the family beach house is it's not like a huge place it's like a small so like the Gathering. cops the cops knew like where it was you know they just didn't want to rescue this woman like what was no that? i don't i don't think that's what it was i just think they're not used to things like that because usually that kind of stuff doesn't happen around there uh but who knows maybe lately um they have but don't don't do drugs please it's not good it's not cute it was actually like really fucked up to see the woman she was like shaking and like going back and forth and like picking at her arms and she was just, and her car was on she was like parked but her car was on no so, she could easily like hit the pedal yeah or just like hit somebody because there's the it was one block away from the beach so oh, there's like oh, kids God. everywhere it's 11 in the morning there's, there's like a mini golf place right next door Love so 
Um, oh, and then just a little reminder of what happened last week. I don't even know if I told you this. A uh, little reminder of what happened last week with the Jehovah's Witness trying to get into my house. I talked about that, right? Yes. All right. So at the beach, you know, I see a woman outside the door and I hear her talking to somebody. At the time, I didn't know what it was, but she was talking to my aunt who was up on the balcony above us. And this woman was a Jehovah's Witness trying to get us to, you know, like swing on by. And my aunt was like, no, like, please we're not interested have a good day so then i get back to um my parents place because i'm dog sitting and i went to a grocery store to get like a little juice cleanse because i had way too much alcohol and i was like my body needs something green so i bought like a little juice cleansing as i'm shopping this guy comes up to me and he like he he like moves my shoulder to, to look at the front of my shirt my, Ew, I'm like, sir, who are you touching? Yeah, and this was around like 10 o'clock at night. I'm by myself in a grocery store that's pretty much empty. And this creepy man comes up and he's holding a book in his right hand. And he tur- he literally puts his hands on me and turns me around to look at my shirt. And he's just like, oh, is that a Christian rock band? Bitch, homeboy, uh, I was wearing a Justin Bieber shirt. Do you know me? Yeah, and I, I was like, oh, no, this is a Justin Bieber shirt. He's like, oh, huh. Oh, that's like, I just thought that it was like a Christian rock band. And I was like, oh, yeah, nope. Sorry to disappoint. Oh, my God, stop. I think people are like, they're trying to abduct, abduct you. Adopt me? Ad- abduct. Take, <sighs> bitch, without your permission. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, because then... He was like, well, do you ever listen to Christian rock music? And I was like, oh, no, not really my thing, not my jam. And he goes, oh, well, do you go to church? And I was like, no, you know, again, not really my thing. I would honestly just be like, sir, I don't believe in Jesus. Can you just leave me alone? Well, I didn't It's wanna... great that you do, but it's just not for me. Right. And I, at, the, at this next point, I was about to be that because I go and I turn around and I'm trying to get my fucking Extra juice. Shit. I'm trying to pick out my motherfucking juice. I need to give my body the goods. Come and get your juice. and he literally he doesn't touch me again but he steps in front of me like in between me and the refrigerator and i was like what it was like a really tight awkward space and his face got so serious and he was like i think you should join us this sunday no i don't like that i didn't like that either so what did you do what did you say i sure as frick didn't join him this was i think this was last wednesday sure i'll come back. yeah so while you were going through that shit out this is what i was going through i was like no retrograde got everyone fucked up i just don't understand why and he was a jehovah's witness he gave me a piece of paper so that's three within like what 10 ish days yeah they're coming for me um i asked for the aliens to abduct me not i'm not look i'm already well, in a cult maybe this sweetie. is a uh Maybe this is Jesus calling me. No, I was gonna say maybe it's like I found the, the light. Are Jehovah Witnesses? I found the light. Oh my God! What if they are? I'm oh saying God, the fucking uh, what is that called? Uh, Scientology. No, it's like when you disguise to be someone you're not. <sighs> Catfish. Maybe you're maybe being catfished by aliens through oh. Jehovah Witness mm-hmm. and. <clears throat> they they're like okay well like what's the thing that's gonna steer him away the most that he won't find out Jehovah's Witness you know well, witness this fist bitch if you try to come up to me again it's just don't be fucking pushy don't- I hate that and that's why I hated working retail people were like well this is your goal like okay people come in knowing what they want if they want help they'll ask oh my like gosh. hello can we talk about like real humans here yeah. You can't persuade someone to buy something that they don't want to fucking buy. People are not fucking stupid. Well, some people you can. I worked at Lush. I maneuvered Lush my way. Lush is like, I don't know. It's different. I feel like it that's is like different. You're right. Face, hair, body, buttholes, like not clothes. Also, we used to test out the products, and I would let all my coworkers know which product not to put up your butthole. I'm so pissed because I could have really used bath bombs, and now I get a bathtub. I can still get you bath bombs. I just don't get that dicks count. That's a lot. That, what's the point? Because it's a gift for you. It's a gift for you. Don't make fun of me for trying to be nice. I had... Oh, no. I was just making fun of myself. I had something <laughs> By else. By mimicking me. <laughs> I had something else to say. Oh, um, if anyone's feeling like super sluggish, um, I recommend... <laughs> Did you hear that? Yes. <laughs> that was my mouth. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cheese and grapes and crackers. You got into my car, a new woman, and you didn't even open them yet. <laughs> um, an egg salad sandwich minus the bread. 
and uh, cantaloupe and uh, carrots and ranch. I ate all of that, and I feel so fucking good right now. Just, I feel like the best I've ever felt at um, 7 o'clock on just, a Monday. Just don't get your ranch on my Aaron Carter poster, <clears throat> and we'll be cool. Okay, sweetie? Okay. Who goes first? I think you go first. What's our topic today? Guys, our topic is raised by mammals. Feral children who were raised by animals. Allegedly. <laughs> Stop using that damn word. I'm going to get that word tattooed on me like above my ass crack like uh, <laughs> with butterflies. It's going to say allegedly in Comic Sans. But it needs to be like a pun in some way. Like how? Like what's alleged about that? Just all of it. <laughs> Is it a temporary tattoo? It's allegedly a tattoo. True. Is it real? I think you go first. I I don't know. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I think I went last last time, right? I think so, but we could like switch since you have, I have two and you have two. Oh, you have two? Uh-huh. Okay, so I'll do one, you do one, I'll do one, you do one. Uh-huh. That makes four, Um, but really quick, can we just talk about how The Wild Thornberries was such a great show? Duh. Did you watch it? Hell yeah, I wa- well, as a child, I haven't seen it in so long because what's his name? Um, Donnie. Yeah! I yeah. Feel like that's Do you know who like... he was voiced by? Who? Flea from um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. What? Yeah. That like, Mind that, that kind of had like an all star cast for the most part it because sure then did. like under wraps. Eliza though. Thornberry was voiced by Lacey Sh- uh, Chaubert. Who that? From Mean Girls. Um, uh, Gretchen. Gretchen Wieners from Mean Girls was Eliza Thornberry. Wow. Did I blow your mind? You did. You blew some. And then Nigel Thornberry was Tim Curry, as many people know. Pennywise, the OG, it. Did you not know that? No. <gasps> I don't know anything. I know nothing. And then Debbie was voiced by Danielle Harris, which I don't think many people would know unless you're into like the horror community because she was in the OG Halloween movies. And Debbie she was, was the hot. <clears throat> Debbie? She was a cartoon. Yeah, Debbie was hot. She like would definitely fit in now. I used to be like, ew, she's like the bitchy older sister, but then I'm like her. <laughs> Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I, I also made a note that uh, George of the Jungle. Remember that movie? Now that was a movie where I saw. That's a, really funny that you mention it because we're doing these uh, feral children. That's why I'm mentioning it. Oh, <laughs> oh I get it. Wild oh Thornberry. Oh my God. I get it. I, I get the. Uh, connection of yeah. why i'm bringing it up yes yeah because uh donnie was his name donnie or was it that was the donnie. monkey yeah C- darwin was the monkey because of darwin uh, theory of evolution sorry that tasted what? like coffee and cantaloupe surprisingly good combo what's the darwin, darwin evolution theory darwin is that what you said oh my god sweetie okay you know what i'm gonna put together a powerpoint presentation for you because everybody listening to this i upload on prezi Upload it on press. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, yeah, so George of the Jungle was one of the only Disney movies where they showed a butt. It was Brandon Fraser's butt, and I felt some type of way. George, George, George of the Jungle, watch out for that tree. Uh, so I guess I'll go first, and then you go, okay? Okay. All right, so this is the story of Oksana Malaya. So, oh, by the way, these stories, these are all true. Uh, So, Oksana was born in November of 1983 in Ukraine. She weighed 5 pounds, 11 ounces, and had no abnormalities. Her parents were alcoholics who wanted a son, but got a daughter. So, one night after heavily drinking, they left their daughter outside. So, looking for warmth, the three-year-old, she was three years old. Fuck that. What is wrong with parents? Crawled into the farm kennel and curled up with the mongrel dogs. So a concerned neighbor finally reported Oksana's case to the authorities when the girl was eight. Oh, so... Three to eight. Love that. Yeah. That's That's a good idea. uh, By then, the effects of her time with the dogs had created some serious issues with Oksana's development. For six years... Homegirl spent her life living in a kennel with dogs outside. And no one knew? Her family knew. They kicked her out. They, As a three-year-old, they like made her live outside because they were drunks and they were fucked up. And the 80s were a weird time in the Ukraine, I guess. 
Wow. So, um, I feel like all these stories are similar. Yeah, because they were raised by animals. Uh huh. She ran on all fours. She panted with her tongue. Love. She uh she would show her teeth and she barked me just like the dogs she had been living with. Now there's a video footage of this. They uh did like a documentary or a short docu series or some something. I think it was the BBC. Um, and she legitimately sounds like a dog, and it's so Are bizarre. You play to it? No, you can look it up, but because if I play it, it's just gonna sound like a dog. Um, so. Anna Chalaya, who was the director of the Odessa Institute, recalls uh, she was more like a little dog than a human child. She couldn't speak. Uh, she couldn't speak or could hardly speak. In fact, she didn't seem to think it was necessary to speak at all. So then Lynn Fry. These are all people who were doing research on her later in life after, you know, when she was eight, she got taken in by the services and all this shit. And they were trying to figure out, like, what went wrong, like what actually happened to her. Like her parents kicked her out? Yeah. Oh. At the age of three. So they're trying to figure out like what's going on and, and why she's acting like a dog. Because her parents kicked her out. Right. But they didn't quite understand that. They just thought, because you know how little kids at the age of eight, maybe they're going to act like a dog. And it's like, oh, oh that's cute little girl. <laughs> <laughs> now stop it. And then when she didn't stop. Little girl. Um, so Lynn Fry was an educational psychologist and she observed when we're talking about how a child learns to live with dogs, there's obviously no deal as such. Uh, there's give and take. The dogs give their love and attention and acceptance in a sense, while the child has to adapt to a dog's situation. If that means eating raw meat and scavenging for rubbish, um, then that's what has to be done in order to survive. So Oksana did not know what a mirror was when she was shown it. And when she looked into the mirror, her... <laughs> mirror. mirror her. <laughs> when she looked into the mirror, she had no recognition of the reflection. Like she didn't... When she was looking at herself, she didn't... She, yeah, you were gonna sing Mulan, bitch. When will my reflection show I am a dog? <laughs> oh, triggered. And just letting the listeners know that Sarah uh, beautifully caressed the microphone. Yeah, no, I don't mean it in any harm. I'm, I'm actually glad she had some type of support, even if it was from animals, right? Because they her were parents nicer than are a fucking dog. pieces of shit, true, right? True, they didn't throw true, her out, true. and she wasn't even like them. Uh huh. Uh, so the lack, her lack of self-awareness makes her in some respects more animal than human. So there are a few cases of feral children who have been able to fully uh, compensate, um, for the neglect they have suffered. Oksana is now, as we record this 34 years old, but her future still hangs in the balance. Um, yeah, they don't really know exactly how she's, she's gotten better. She can form sentences and stuff. Uh, she's made good progress. She's learned to walk and talk, um, like a normal human being, uh, quote unquote normal, uh, which is unusual in cases of feral children, I guess, especially in her age, since she was so young and that's like the primary time for a kid to develop. Um, one researcher explained Oksana had to have heard languages on a regular, uh, on a regular basis, um, it may not have been directed to her, but she had to have been exposed to it to see she had to see humans talking to each other. So she like it's it's so fucking crazy to think and about. So can she she could speak English some? No, she didn't speak English. She speaks uh Ukrainian. Oh, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. But she speaks. Um so in order to get a clearer sense of Oksana's intellectual capacities, Dr. Lynn Fry asked her to draw a picture of her home with herself in it. Uh, and Dr. Lynn Fry says a drawing of a person has always been taken as a good judge of basic ability. Um, and her drawing was what you would expect from a six year old. So Dr. Fry has also brought up the standard of the cognitive test. So at eight, she was drawing like a six year old. No, this was older. Okay. When she was older. Okay. Um, Dr. Fry also brought up some standard cognitive tests to assess Oxana's uh, verbal and nonverbal sales because this took like more than a year for her to be able to start talking and using a, a writing implement. Oh, um, after an exhaustive session, Oxana only managed to demonstrate the ability of a five-year-old. Uh, so today, Oxana lives in a clinic in Odessa where she works with farm animals. But she was on a talk show and stuff. Um... I wish someone would help her get a haircut. 
Maybe she just likes it that way. Maybe. Maybe. But she's, you know, good for her. She had a rough... Who am I to say? She had a yeah, rough Yeah, who childhood. are you to say? You're right. Fuck me. Um, I want to go there. I really appreciate you as a person. <laughs> Goodbye. Why? So that's... uh. That's Oxana. And I highly encourage y'all to go look her up. Uh, Oxana is O X A N A M A L A Y A. All right. Um, so uh, this is about a Romanian boy who lived in the wild. He separated from his family for uh, three years. Um. He was found at age seven. The location was uh, Brasov, Romania, and um, he was found in 2002. So um, the mother of Romania's uh, Mowgli boy, which is what they called him in the hospital because he was in the wild. In the jungle book. Yeah, you already know. Um, she took her son home for the first time after he spent years living with wild animals in the forest of Transylvania. Also didn't know Transylvania was a real thing. Yeah. I thought it was just like that. Dracula. Yeah, I thought it was like that. Um, the boy's name is uh, Tranian Calderar. I'm here for it. Lena, which is his mother, um, had a heart-stopping moment uh, when he ran out in front of a car to chase a cat. This is how they got separated. Oh, no. Um, he's nicknamed Mowgli uh, by the hospital staff after the character in the Jungle Book. Um mm-hmm. He was found by a shepherd two months later, uh, barely alive, huddled in a cardboard box, naked and the size of a three-year-old. He had forgotten how to speak, so he was um, seven when they found him, but he was the size of a three-year-old. Damn. Mm Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, His mother found him by uh, recognizing him on a television news report. Uh, She said that she... Fled from her husband's home three years ago after he beat her, and she believes that uh, Tranian ran away for the same reason. So Did they got she separated. not report him missing? I guess not. Did she not like go hunt for him? No. Nope. I, I feel like she probably did. I mean, right, just but it was unsuccessful. Clearly. Um. Doctors state it would have been impossible for him to survive alone and think that he was looked after by wild dogs. Wild dogs are fucking scary. Well, they loved him. Uh, when he was rescued, he suffered from severe malnourishment, rickets, and his circulation was bad. Uh, the doctors think that it was from frostbite. Oh, he no. became violent when angry and preferred to sleep under his bed. That's like, um, did you see Mama? Yes. That Mama. was like those kids from Mama. Right. Which I enjoyed that movie. However, the lighting when it was nighttime was so freaking blue. It pissed me off how does that even work what do you mean i mean obviously it was like made up what the blue thing oh the light went outside yeah it's, they filmed it in a studio i know so I'm they're just, just like blasting fucking but lights. i'm saying why wouldn't you make it like believable I well i mean the whole movie isn't really that believable. i honestly feel high and i'm not <laughs> Maybe it was the egg salad, dude. Are you feeling that egg you salad, feel egg dude? salad, dude? Oh, <laughs> I'm so fuck. egg saladed. Oh, you're salad faced. <laughs> dude, I can see it in your eyes. You're feeling it. You even had that cantaloupe. Uh, ah! Um, so he was kept under observation in an orphanage in Brazov. Um, where is that again? Romania. Yugoslavia. Oh. Until his ma until his mother was fit uh, to look after him. Uh, when was that? Right. So his mother, who's twenty three, uh, says she loved her son, but she had a violent husband who beat him. Uh, when she left and lost contact with Tranian, um, she tried to get him back but couldn't find him. She said, "I never stopped thinking about him, but there was nothing I could do. I hoped he had perhaps been adopted by another family. So this must be like maybe." <laughs> A thing there. We're definitely not getting the whole story, too. We're not getting her side. Like, she may have encouraged him to leave. It that's, might be. That's true, but she's not going to tell that, and he's yeah, not going to know because. Right, that's what I'm saying is she might have been like, you need to run away because I can't get away. And then when they found him, her story was he 
ran into the street to get a cat. Right. Um, his new home is less than seven miles from where he was found. He was found in February. Um, oh, my God. So he was out there for three months in, like, the coldest three m- Well, actually, I don't know how it is over there, but, like, right. here. I'm, I'm guessing it's cold as shit. It could be. Um, he lives in a remote village in uh, Vista de Hoes with his mother and her parents and his three brothers and three sisters. Vista de Hoes. It doesn't... Vis- doesn't that mean house of hoes? Visti. It's V I S T E A D J J O S. Vista means view. Okay. View of hoes. I see them hoes. <laughs> um, the youngest is his brother Mihai, and he's nine and has become his best friend. <laughs> Mihai too. I'm salad faced. <laughs> they can't hold a conversation, but the boy the boy has made progress in um reintegrating. His mother says he still has a long way to go. I bet. He still hasn't got got used to saying when he needs to go to the lab. A Tory. I was gonna say lab. Um someone needs to <laughs> But you did. I did. <laughs> <And you> just... <laughs> Am I okay? Yeah. Should I say that again? No. Um, she says someone needs to keep an eye on him at all times because it's easy for him to get hurt. He still can't identify the dangers in the street. Like an untrained puppy, he sees something interesting like a cat on the side of the road. He'll just run across regardless of whether there are cars coming. His mother is relieved that her son has gained weight. Um, she says when he came here, he wasn't even able to climb five stairs. Um, I don't think he would have lasted much longer in the wild. He was so weak, but now he can do all that alone. Doctors tell me he has strengthened, and this is a good sign. I wonder what he ate while he was in the woods. Probably things the the dogs gave him. They probably brought him food. Uh, They say that he learned how to share sweets with his friends. Only two months ago, he was desperately defending his food and growling for another plate before finishing the one in his hands. Well, yeah, probably because he hasn't had food and freaking for... Well, he was... I mean, I don't want to say only gone for three months, but it was three months, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, again, and then the mother said, uh, my husband starved us both. He didn't give us yeah. food for days. So yeah, that's was- what I'm saying is there's more to it than just this kid going out in the streets. Ex- exact. No, being raised by dogs. Wolves. It's probably because he didn't get fed before that. Yeah, and was probably possibly allegedly like beat and stuff. Right. Well, the dad sounds like a a dick bag. Well, his father, who has the same name as him, is 24, and they are married under gypsy law. She says she ran away from her husband and came back to her parents when training him was only four, which was three years ago. He was uh, beaten badly. He didn't allow me to take my child, even though I tried to. He said the child belonged to him. Fuck out of here, you bag of dicks. Um, he tried, so I guess the mother tried to see him, uh... The ki- the, the child? Boy. Yeah, uh, but his, hu- her husband, uh, got his rel- relatives to tell her that he wasn't home. So she lost touch with her husband and then came, uh, and then that's when she saw the television report. <sighs> Why? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Say that one more time. So... So, hold on. When he went missing, he was under... The little boy was under the father's care? Yes. Oh. Hmm. Suspicious. I guess what happened is when he ran away, when uh, Tranian ran away to uh, try to get the cat, that's when she probably ran. And she probably thought, like, I can, like, get him back. Right. But it probably didn't work like that. Well, it didn't, obviously, but frick. Right. Damn, that kid is going to have some issues. So if he was four in 2002, he's probably... When they say like three, that was three years ago, that was three years ago, like when he was found. Gotcha. He's 23 right now. Love that. So um, the mom went to the hospital after she uh, saw him on TV and he said, Lena, mom. And that was the only thing he knew how to say. Oh, that's cute. Right? But depressing as frick. I know, but he was found by a shepherd who was walking across country after his car broke down. Um, nearby was a body of a dog, which uh, he was eating. The little boy was eating a dog? Uh-huh. Why did you wait till just now to tell me that? Because I have to save it. You said build the story. Remember that one time? Yeah, I did. 
What if that was his sister? What if that was his like dad? He was, He's, wait, wait. He was seeking vengeance on his father IRL. We're making things up. I'm building the story. IRL. So he attacked and killed the dad, and the dad was the leader of the pack. So then he became the leader of the pack. He was found in animals. <laughs> he was found in an animal position, and his movements were animalistic. Um, the facts show that he was not brought up in a social environment and might have been abandoned a long time ago. We know that. Uh, he was not fussy. He ate everything we gave him, but he didn't know what fruit was. He had uh, dark skin, flared nostrils, and uh, brown hair. Um, now it's cut short. And um, he, has to ne- he had to learn how to start um, talking and to behave because he acted like a dog. A wild dog. I wonder how he's doing now. Right. Did they have any updates? Mm-mm. They didn't really have any updates on Oxana either. I feel like they only did for her because there was a documentary. Yeah, but the documentary was old. Right. Like, yeah, they didn't. Because in the documentary, they said now she was 22, I think. But now IRL, she's 34. You do the math. I can't. I can't math today. Oh, little Mowgli boy. Well, right? I hope he's doing okay. I hope he knows how to talk. I'm glad he can share sweets with his friends, siblings. That's sweet. Is he holding a poster of himself? Does she not know who Aaron Carter is? Uh, Janine, we're talking about you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> that is a poster of Aaron Carter. She said, "Is he holding a poster of himself?" Yes, he sure is. That's not. I have a poster of you in my basement, so that's that, not. That's like not far out off. Of the right. question. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is the story of Marina Chapman. So, this shirt is crazy. Okay, so according to her, sometime in the 1950s, on her fifth birthday, uh, Marina was playing with pea pods in her backyard of her home. They're like the little um, pea pods, you know, two peas in a pod. She had them growing in her backyard. Oh. Um, in uh, her home of rural Northeast Columbia when she was chloroformed from behind. <gasps> wow. On her fifth birthday. Uh, she was in and out of consciousness. Fifth birthday? Her fifth birthday. She was in and out of consciousness and she felt someone carrying her. Someone she didn't know. She was kidnapped and then uh, all she remembers was waking up by herself in the Colombian jungle. So uh, she remembers how hard it was to fall asleep with the loud sounds of the jungle at night. She said you couldn't see anything in front of you. Like how? Stop. Ah, and she was five. Yes. And you're yelling. You're spiking the levels. I'm sorry. This is crazy. I'm yeah. not okay. In the 1950s. This story is crazy. You're going to be like 007's drink. You're going to be shooketh, not stirred. Okay. Um, only the only 90 kids remember. Only um, 90 kids remember. Only, only 90. 90 kids. <laughs> 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 oh, frick. Uh, so she would wake up every morning to realize that this was her reality, and she felt like no one would ever find her. On her second day in the jungle, she was found by a few little monkeys high in the trees. Hi, um, monkey. <clears throat> She said initially they would like shake the branches and then they would run away. But later that day, one little monkey jumped off the tree and ran towards her. And they're like the little monkeys. Did you ever see Indiana Jones and the Legend of the Hidden Temple? They're the ones that are like no, uh, not the white, legend. right? And tan. They're white, tan, black. Yes. That's um, the one. Oh, they're not like the monkeys in Jumanji. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Got it. Yes. Okay. Not the Legends of the Hidden Temple. That's uh, only 90 kids remember. Uh, 90 kids only 90 only a handful of 90 children remember uh, yeah um so the little monkey jumped off the tree and ran towards her uh it ran away before returning and it became friendly with her so then a couple of other monkeys uh joined in so uh they would find food and drop it for her from the trees so they would find food and stuff up up yonder and they would drop it down below Um, so they began jumping on her in a playful way. They would cuddle her. They would pick through her hair and like find her. I know. So cute. Uh, so for five years, Marina lived in solitude. Five years with monkeys. Accompanied only by monkeys in the vast Colombian forest. Then one day she saw two humans who were hunting. Uh, they took her to a town of Cucutta. I'm probably saying that wrong. 
Sorry about it. Um, Kukata. She was taken to a house where she met a woman named Carmen. Marina had not been inside a house for five years. She's probably like, what is this? Which was more than half her life at that time. I'm, what is this? So she hadn't sat in a chair or lie in a bed for half a decade as a small child. So the couple that found her, uh, they brought her there and they left her. And that was when she realized that she wasn't going to be taken back to her family. She had been sold to this woman named Carmen as a slave. So she was ordered to clean and do a lot of tedious chores. She wasn't fed well. Uh, She was violently whipped when she would do something wrong. What the fuck? She lived there for two years until one day she escaped and ended up in a park. She was 12 years old and she lived on the streets for two more years. So now she's This girl has gone through it. So now she's age 14 and she's found by a group of people and she's taken back um she's taken back by the family uh their last name was the Ferraros. Oh fuck them. Well no. No no no. This is a new family. Oh. She's 14. So they're like we're going to take you in, sweetie. So that whole family they moved to England. So from Colombia to England where she had her first experience of love and happiness. So in her 20s she married and settled in Bradford with her husband and she had a daughter Vanessa. I think she had other kids but um th- n- pretty much it was just Vanessa who was documented. Um so according to her kids um she would like How do you like go on and have a normal life after that? You don't really. Um when she grew up like her kids are adults now they were like in their 20s and like they remembered um when they would get off the bus like their mom would be climbing a fucking tree and shit. I'm sorry. Um, So then her children encouraged her to share her story 40 years later after keeping it all a secret. Okay, so then, uh, you know, she came out with this. She started writing a book and it was obviously hella controversial. Um, So some. Why? Because think about if you read a book that says this is a true story and it was everything I just told you, you wouldn't be skeptical. Let me get into it. I, I would probably... He just put his hand in my face. I would be skeptical, sweetie. Keep your ranch away from my Aaron Carter poster. Okay. So some uh, psychologists who heard of her story said that uh, if she was a slave as a child, uh, she may have, without knowing, created false memories. So because she was going through such traumatic events, she formed this world of escapism as a child where she was hanging out with monkeys in the forest or in the jungle, rather. Um, So she allowed a so now she's an adult. This was in 1950s. Uh, This was coming about, I want to say 2012 is what my intuition is is telling me. Intuition. Uh, It's also what the back of this DVD is telling me. (laughs) It's a DVD. Um, So she allowed a false memory specialist uh, to test her. So this guy sits her down. He does this fucking weird ass test where he plays her a bunch of words and then he asks her... they, They like explained it and I just didn't fucking get it. So they... They played her a bunch of words and then they gave her a list of words. Some of them were shown to her and some of them were correlated. So if they would say like, if they, in in the audio she listened to, if they said chair, then they would say later, like five minutes later after she heard a bunch of shit, they would say, uh, the word would be sitting. Did you hear the word sitting? So in her head, she would correlate chair to sitting. So she would think, yes, I heard sitting, but she didn't. She heard chair. So they're like false memories. I don't know how fucking accurate it is, but it's called priming. If you want to freaking look it up, you losers. Um, So after she takes this test, it is concluded that she is more susceptible to having false memories than normal human beings. Mm, Okay. So meaning it is possible that uh, in this psychologist's professional opinion, that Marina may have created the jungle and the monkeys up in her mind, but the results of this test are not definitive at all. Uh, So Marina's daughter, Vanessa, who again is a grown ass adult, she takes Marina back to Columbia with this dude named Kevin Howlett. So this Kevin Howlett dude, he's a journalist as well as a political consultant and a lobbyist. He has experience working in the UK parliament. He's a regular panelist on Colombian television, which I guess gives you credibility these days. Tila Tequila who? Tila Tequila. Who? Uh, so he a turn crazy. a political uh, communications str- strategy strategy strat 
strap on. Strategic. I'll take it. Um, and he was a university lecturer as well as a founder and editor of Columbia Politics. So basically, he was like a credible dude. Uh, he wasn't incredible, but he was a credible dude. Thank you very much. So again, in the 1950s, when Marina was born, um, so he, this this dude is like. He's like, okay, let's look at the validity of this because now it's all up in the air. It's like, here's this girl who writes this book that people are like, you're trying to get a buck out of everybody. This shit did not happen to you. But some people can, were- Can't you like go back to the jungle she was in and this see is, if the monkeys This is like... what they're doing. Okay. So now um, she doesn't remember too, too much from her childhood. So all she knows is she was born in the 1950s. She doesn't know exactly what year it was. Um, but the dude was like, okay, so- when she was uh, when she was born to the time when she was five years old, there was an awful civil war that was happening in Colombia. It was uh, La Valencia, translated the violence. Uh, it was a ten year civil war uh, in Colombia from 1948 to 1958 between the Colombian Conservative Party and the Colombian Liberal Party. Uh, mainly, they were fighting for the countryside. So, due to the incomplete or non-existent uh, statistical records, uh, the exact measurement of the humanita humanitarian consequences is impossible. Um, scholars, however, estimate that between 200,000 to 300,000 lives were lost, 600,000 to 800,000 were injured, uh, and at least 1 million people were displaced. So, uh, La Valencia directly or indirectly affected about 20% of the population uh, with a percentage that high. A shit ton of people could have been kidnapped. They they say that, you know, children had become burdens. So they were either taken away by strangers or sold or left behind. Yikes. So now they're like in this time frame. Okay. She could be making it up. It could fit her timeline. But they're just saying it, her story. This is just a little piece that it, it's. It might be possible. All right. What so, about the facts? So show me the car facts. She ate only fruits and nuts for five years. Okay. Monkey girl. Malnourishment would have stunted her growth, right? Fun fact. Audrey Hepburn. Remember her? Uh -huh. That's the reason why she had a petite body. I definitely should have done my research about why exactly, but I remember- Because she ate nuts? No, because she was, uh, when she was younger, there was a- um, her family was going through some hardships while there was like a war. I forget what fucking country she's from. I'm going to look it up so I don't sound like a dumbass. Wait, so she has a nice body because she was malnourished? Yeah. So wow. When she... That's all I got to do? Okay. <laughs> oh, no. That's fucked up. Uh, so she's from Belgium. So um, when she was in Belgium, her and her family didn't really have that much to eat. And she had like a super petite body. So then as she grew up, she was shorter and she was more petite because she was literally malnourished and starving growing up anyway both so marina had an x-ray no big deal where a forensic anthropologist found these lines in her bones that are called harris lines which only appear when a human is going through long periods of malnourishment as a child ha ha so uh the lines were estimated to have been there when marina was age six through nine which fits perfectly with her story so then Marina and her daughter Vanessa meet with this dude who had been studying monkeys for like 20 years. He's a skeptic. He bought her book. He read it. He was respectful, but he made it very clear. Not not exactly to her, but he made it very clear um, with what he was saying that he wasn't really buying her shit. But he was, I'll give it to him. He was like respectful. Um, so he sat her down and he tested her. He had like this big ass book of monkeys and he wanted to see you know if she could recognize the ones that she claims raised her for five years uh and she's just like i would never forget them like i would know them the instant that you know i saw them and well how would this if how would this claim anything because if she's wrote a book about it she's gonna stick to what she wrote if it's not true but how i don't prove anything but she didn't know the species she's like not oh. a monkey specialist oh. she just knew that there were monkeys do you know what I mean? Like she, she could literally point to anything. Oh, I guess. I don't know. Okay. So, okay. So this is what happened. She, uh, immediately, she was super confident in what species I it was. I feel like the guy set her up. Well, she's like, that's it. Those are them. And, uh, it, it was specifically the sinus albatron capu capuchin, uh, surprisingly out of all the Colombian monkeys, they were the only species that would take interest in humans. Oh, um, ha -ha. but she could have done a quick Google search. <sighs> 
So he continues to test Marina. So they go into the woods and immediately she picks up a little fruit. She opens it and eats it. Uh, She describes what they look like when they're fully ripe. She's like, oh, this one isn't ripe because it's a little white. But when they're ripe, they're pink. And this is what they taste like. They taste sweet. But she knew she knew that she could pick up shit off the ground and eat it. Again, it could be a Google search. But um, I would not Google search that. And I'd be like, oh, well, I don't know. Because if this is her story and she's running with it, I'm just being objective here. Right. Um, so she also mentioned specific details she learned from monkeys, like using rocks to crack open nuts and other shit like that, which, uh, the monkey specialist dude said no other normal person in the public would really know that because that detail about monkeys using, she, I don't, I fucking forget. Yeah. Like rocks and certain specific shit, like otters do that and stuff. Um, but for these specific monkeys, he said that the primate ologists, which are the, you know, the people who specialized in, in primates and monkeys, they didn't pick up on that until recently. And she knew this oh, like 30 shit. years before all right. these or 40 years before all these other fuckers. Um, so then Marina and daughter Vanessa go to this other guy. Right. So this dude hooks her up to a machine. And her daughter it, believes her, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, but she wants the world to believe. So she's just like helping because the mom is just like the. It's not that the mom doesn't care, but she's sick of having to prove herself. And then over the kids, and over and over and over again. And you have to thank the kids at this point because she was on like I think she was on the Today Show. Like it was oh, wow. she came to America. Like it was a huge scandal. Um, and you got to think if you put your mom in that limelight, your 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 mom doesn't talk about this shit for forty years right, because one like it fucked her up as a kid, whether she's telling the truth or not. Like she probably went through some shit that she doesn't want to talk about so you finally get her to talk about it and then she gets this massive backlash that was totally not anticipated and then you feel i would feel some type of way i'd be like oh shit this is on me yeah because i i like almost forced my mom to write all this shit now everybody's calling her a liar so um so anyway they go to another dude He hooks her up to a machine that measures her reactions before her conscious brain uh, has time to realize what she's reacting to. So it's like a really, really quick, it's hooked up to her, like her temples and her brains and shit. Um, So basically they're measuring how she initially reacts to something before the human brain can actually process it. Um, So she is sitting in front of a giant projector and she's shown random objects like chairs and shit like that and then they threw in some pictures of monkeys and then they threw in some pictures of her family and the results of the test showed that she had a heightened emotional reaction when she was shown the images of the monkeys which were almost as high as the emotions that she got when she was shown images of her family Aww. i know it's so cute um and then she like broke down and started crying like i felt really bad for this woman um so then marina and vanessa these girls they are all they are traveling all around uh, Colombia. So they travel to a town where she claims that she was a slave as a child. Um, so it was obviously very, very different than when she was there because she was 10. Younger, right. And then last time she was there was 12 because then she lived on the streets till she was 14. So she said, um, She didn't quite recognize where they were, but she said, if you take me to the tuberculosis hospital, that'll be like a good starting point because I know my way around the town from there. Mm -hmm. Like that's the point of familiarity because everything had been like renovated and there were streets and people had lawns and shit. Um, So they pretty much bring her to the tuberculosis hospital and there's like a camera crew following her. Uh, And she said so much had changed since the 50s, but she could find her way to the house uh, where she said Carmen had lived, where she was kept as a slave. So they're walking around the streets uh, and she sees a tree that like a huge tree in the front yard. And she's like, I know that tree. She walks up to it. She says this fence wasn't here. The house looks a little bit different, but this is the house like hands down this for sure. So instead of going to that house, they go to the neighbor's house. They knock on the door where the neighbors inform them that that house was lived in uh, by a woman with violent tendencies. Oh, a woman named Carmen. Oh. So the neighbor says that Carmen was an awful neighbor. She was an awful person. They found out she was keeping one of her own granddaughters chained up in the basement in the house. Yeah. Uh, she said. And uh, the girl didn't know that, right? Who? Uh, Marina? Yeah. No, she didn't know that. Um, That's crazy. So this could have been before her or after her. Um, she, the neighbor said that she had she had like a whip and shit. Um, 
And now, so now the skeptics in that are involved in the story, they don't really know what to think because how would she have known all these things? I mean, it, people were still just like, well, she could have just been there as a slave. And the whole monkey thing was a, a, was a false memory because she went through traumatic shit. Like that part could be true, but I understand. But, but you the got whole the X rays and the monkeys right. and the nuts and Audrey Hepburn. Uh, so, um, Marina doesn't remember her birth parents or exactly where she was born. Uh, we don't know why she was left in the jungle by kidnappers. Some people think that her parents, um, her birth parents may have arranged to have that happen. Some people think it was her actual father who kidnapped her and left her in the jungle to like either fend for herself or I don't know because we don't know the shit that was going on. She doesn't remember her parents. Um, But what we do know is that according to scientists, overwhelming evidence proves that Marina Chapman was raised by monkeys in the jungle. Yeah. So. Pucker up and kiss it. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? It's pretty crazy, right? I think it was true. Uh, Yeah, you can watch a special on Amazon Prime video. It might be on YouTube. Um, But her name is Marina Chapman. Very interesting. And her book, I think she has two books. Read them. It it might be uh, two different versions of the same book but um i did read a couple of the first chapters because when i wanted to present this information there wasn't that much about before um before she was kidnapped because it kind of just jumped in she was chloroformed but in her book that's how it starts because that's all she remembers um she celebrated her birthday she doesn't know how old she is still she just knows it was sometime in the earlier 50s so so she has like a a four a three or four year time frame that she's like i might be 60 i might be 50 oh that's kind of fun yeah it's like happy 56th birthday bitch happy i don't know birthday uh yeah but i just think it's crazy that they um they found it found out that shit through the x-rays i think that's really interesting interesting so yeah marina chapman baby read it love it live it monkeys all right this is um, the story of uh, the gazelle boy. Oh, wow. Um, he was found in 1946 at the age of 10 in the Syrian desert. Um, he was raised by uh, gazelles uh, for nine years. Nine years. <laughs> nine years. Uh, they tried to civilize him. Um, he attempted to escape, but they found him a month later. So they, meaning people. <laughs> Thanks for that. Tried to save him, but he ran back to the desert. By gazelles? Yeah. That's interesting. That's an animal I didn't think would, like, give a frick. Right. They have the pointy horns. Yeah, so uh, they're medium-sized an- antelopes. Uh, they're found in Africa and Asia. We just had cantaloupes. See? Oh, God. Oh, it's antelopes. Did I say uh, cantaloupe? No, I said cantaloupe. Uh, they can reach the speed up to 40 miles per hour. That's fast. You know that boy was fast, too. Um, They believe that the Syrian gazelle boy was raised by Thompson's uh, gazelle because he can run at a speed of 50 miles per hour. Nuh-uh. Yeah, right. Are you kidding me? And that's really all I could find on this little boy. 50 miles per hour? I told you. That's probably why. No, there's no way. How? How how fast is the fastest human being? There's no freaking way he ran up 50 miles. My ass. Some people say KPH. Oh, babe, that's different. That's kilometers. Oh. God damn it, Sarah. My, 50 miles per hour. Doot, doot. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay, so that's like 25-ish. Okay, but although he was really thin, allegedly he was extremely fit. And strong, and he had muscles of steel. I'll I'll believe maybe 25, but I am not 20, 50 miles per hour. Okay, so the, the fastest human runner runs... Humans could perhaps... <coughs> humans could perhaps run as fast as 40 miles per hour. Um, but the world's fastest runner, Usain Bolt... Uh, clocked nearly 28 miles per hour in the 100 meter sprint so if this dude is running about 25 right i'm gonna do 15 what is what is kilometers 
a kilometer mean? that's what like the rest of the world who's not america measures in but us americans you know we got to be difficult um it's about half i think one kilometer is a ba- or no, no no excuse me one mile is about 0.6 kilometers i could totally be pulling that out of my asshole but that sounds about right yeah okay no 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 yeah i i'm really just confusing myself <laughs> i think people are confused Okay, so 50 kilometers some stories say per hour would be 31 miles per hour. 50 MPH, some say 50. He did not run 50 miles per hour. I'm calling the cops. He did not run 50 Call miles per hour. Call the cops. You and the motherfucking barking ass dogs. I said it wrong. What? Fuck what? you too, bitch. Call the cops. It's a song. Oh. Who let the dogs out? It's like you and them motherfucking loud ass barking dogs. If anyone can uh, quote that lyric, send us a DM on our Instagram page, Esoteric Oddities. Thanks. I don't check the email, so just DM me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Honestly, I haven't really checked the email in a little bit as well. Uh, Was that it for the last dude? Yeah, that was him. The Syrian gazelle boy. Who might run 50 miles per hour, 31 miles per hour, 26 miles per hour, 108 miles per hour. You be the judge. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so I have a fun fact. The number of animals killed for meat every hour in the United States is 500,000. That is 5-0-0-0-0-0. So uh, eat a veggie burger. Thank you. Are you looking for one? Girl. I always forget. This is the one thing I forget because I scrambled to do everything. You better scramble your eggs. Okay, I'll do my tweet of the week. Wait. Oh, okay. McDonald's. (laughs) McDonald's once made bubblegum flavored broccoli. Who? They were trying to get kids to eat healthier. Who? So they made like it cotton candy flavored. McDonald's. Who? Why would they do that? I kind of am curious. Was it pink or was it green? It was pink. (gasps) Nuh-uh. Now, what about that as natural? Food coloring. Since when was McDonald's trying to get kids to eat healthier? Sure, you put some freaking apples in a goddamn kid's meal. That doesn't mean you're a fucking Mother Teresa for the nutritionists, you assholes. Get out of here with your fucking broccoli. Okay, my tweet. Get out of here. My tweet of the week is from my girl, uh, Dolly Parton. And she says, when folks ask for my advice on staying positive, I just tell them it's simple. All the healing starts with you. It's all about your attitude, no matter what life throws at you. I love her. Sometimes I literally will listen to a song that's not sad that she sings, and I will start crying because I just think about her and her positive energy, and she's just such a beam of light. We we literally don't deserve her. But what we do deserve is another Shrek movie. So if you guys want to head on over to patreon.com slash esoteric oddities, we are now doing a fundraiser to uh to start our own Shrek franchise. Uh but because of copyright issues, it has to be Shrek S H R E Q. Um so if you can head on over to patreon.com, you'll help us support a good cause. I feel like every time I do a tweet of the week, it's always like coming for somebody. Come for them. Okay, John at John. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't like where this is going. McCohen underscore says, stop getting rid of your pets because they aren't what you expected. Clifford was literally the smallest puppy and turned out to be a 30-foot red dog. And Emily Elizabeth still made it work. Okay, stop getting rid of your fucking pets. (laughs) Uh, speaking of copyright, I actually wrote a book as a child called Me and Clifford Go to the Beach, and I illustrated it. That's so cute. <laughs> and I, I wrote about how me and Clifford went to the beach. He was a big-ass dog. Can you imagine the shits? Guys, on... Uh, Can you imagine the Red Rockets? Holy shit. Ew, that's disgusting. Tomorrow when this episode comes out, I'll be sure to... Um, Thank you. When the, you know, that new episode post is posted, I'll be sure to follow up with the damage that was done to my walls. Yeah, so the, keep, keep an eye out. On the out. esoteric story. Uh, snap story? What is it called? I'm yeah, old. we'll put it I on the know. snap story, but it'll but people only have 24 hours. So we'll put it on the twatter. We'll put it on... Um, no. We'll put it on Instagram, like, too. Yeah, okay. We'll put it on all of it. All right. We'll pour some sugar on me. Yeah. Cool. Thank you guys for listening. You know where to follow us. Thanks for listening. And then keep those good reviews coming. Please, five stars. Um, We're worth it. Give it to me. I'm poor. <laughs> I need this to take off. <laughs>
<laughs> pay me um but we are actually about to go record a bonus episode so if you want some bonus content for only five dollars you can get bonus episodes you can hear our mouths make these noises for a longer amount of time than you normally would and who wouldn't want that me i would want that okay because because i said who wouldn't and then you said me so i made the inference that you didn't want that willy wonka Willy Wonka. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.